Oh, hey, so it's FM23 time, and therefore, time for a new team. Enter AC Reggiana. Associazione Calcio Reggiana 1919 is a club based in Reggio Emilia over in the northern region of Italy. Due to financial troubles and poor play in recent years, they are currently in Serie C Girone B. AC Reggiana's last appearance in Serie A, Italy's top flight of football, dates back to the 1996-97 season. And thus, we are here to try and change that sooner rather than later. Yet again, here's Captain Tsubasa influencing my life and my FM save decisions. So before the season starts, we sell Fausto Rossi and invest that money in grabbing a few players like Andrea Paolucci from Virtus Intella, Timo Castev from Fiorentina, and Casper Panamen from Bologna. We'll need him, as our highest paid player and team captain Luca Sigarini is out for, at minimum, the first half of the entire season. So, with our schedule in place and our expectations to at least qualify for the Serie A playoffs in place, we go into the first game of the season against Virtus Entella in a 5 3 2 uh, formation with a uh, defensive midfielder. And it all ends in a 0 0 draw. And that was a bit anticlimactic. So our form is a little inconsistent at the beginning of the season as we do win some matches against the likes of Alessandria and Torres. We end up losing a very close game against Gupio because communication is in fact a struggle. And then draw against teams like Fermana and Obia in our first six games of the season prior to finding ourselves winning 5-2 in the first round of the Coppa Italia Lega Pro against Novara, which is a steady said tournament between all teams involved in all three various groups, with the winner getting a bye to the second round of the promotion playoffs, which is ideally where our board wants us to be at the end of the year, so a tournament like this and winning it probably helps our odds of actually making it all the way through. What doesn't help, however, is the fact that over the course of these games, we keep losing players like Eric Lanini, Dimo Krastev, and Dennis Chiesa to injury. So our next game against Imolese, we do win 3 to nothing, and Marco Rosario ends up busting this thing out after scoring a- And of course, thanks to that stunt, the FM gods do see fit to punish us accordingly as we go on an abysmal streak of games with a draw against Reconactese, a 5-3 epic that does not end well for us against Siena, and then a big one in which is the derby of Via Emilia against Cesena in which they score early in the game with a free kick, we end up losing it 1-0, uh, and then to top it all off, Karadese comes in and just kicks the absolute stuffing of us, uh, 3 to nothing. And of course, it doesn't help that we also lost some more depth players in Alessa, Alessa Luciani and Santo D'Angelo to injury as our medical ward begins to look something a little bit akin to this. So with those losses, we're now 12th in the league and nearing the relegation playoffs. The chairman of the board and the supporters are ready to throw down with me if this form continues, and so I had to take a deep good look at myself and our tactics. We needed to go full Italian. The first test of our new formation uh, does come out successfully in a match against Processo in the Coppa Italia Lega Pro with a dominant 5-1 win which leads into some more wins in the league uh, play process against Pontedera, uh, going 4-1 against them, Montevarchi being next, coming into our house and being on the receiving end of a 4-1 beatdown as well. Third round of the Coppa Italia Liga Pro against Chilean Giuliano City is a bit of a tighter affair, but thanks to a goal on their end of the second year from Mohamed Varela, we do end up uh, beating them 1-0. We do take that momentum into San Donato, uh, beating them at their own house. Luces and Libertas, who are relegation candidates, do get floored in a 4 0 loss, and then Vizpasaro is beaten to end the month unbeaten. 
But in December, the winning streak does come to an end after a tr tough draw against Ancona in the 90th minute, off the most asinine on go I've ever seen in my life. But we do recover by winning in the quarterfinals of the Coppa Italia Liga Pro against Vincenza, only to then see the unbeaten streak outright end at Remedia's hands in a 1-0 loss. Thankfully, we do bounce back with a pair of wins against Virtus and Tella, and against Alessandria before tying a 1-1 against Fiorenzuola and going into the holiday break in a much better position in the Serie C table standings. Now, with the January transfer window, I wanted to add depth to the midfield. I try to bring in Davide Mazzocco on loan from Citadella, but then our board decides to block the tr move entirely because apparently I haven't brought in enough young players to be here. As if we needed any more evil bald men in our lives. Alright, you know what? Fine, fine. I'll, I'll cave in. I'll go ahead and bring in some young players, like Emanuele Torassi, Enrico Selegin, Jeremy Bro, and Pietro Rovaglia, plus a pair of signings for next year in Gabriele Bellodi and Damiano Cancellieri. Better yet, I'll go ahead and just win all the rest of the games in January on top of it all. Is that Does that make you happy? Will you let me sign somebody over 25 now that I've done this? Three days later. Oh, Citadella parted ways with Mazzocco mutually? Does that mean I can actually sign him now? Cool. Now, February was our busiest month yet in terms of fixtures, but we do come out of it fairly well. The boys understand the assignment of getting a pair of wins against Obia and against Imolese. Uh, we do have a bit of a bump on the road against Veracana Tese, who uh, end up drawing us there 1-1. But against Avellino 1912 in the Coppa Italia Liga Pro in the second leg, we do dominate with a 5-2 win. We end up getting a draw against Siena 0-0, but we do end up winning against our heated rivals in Cesena and against Caradese. And that result does put us tied in first place in the league. With only 8 games left in the season, it's a slippery slope between 1st and 5th, and with March being a busy schedule, we had to be on our toes. And we did, with 5 wins and 2 draws, and then leading into the second leg of our uh, final of the Coppa Italia Lega Pro against Virtus Verona, which by virtue of winning the first leg, uh, the second leg, ends up with a close chance by Casper Cas uh, Panaman uh, taking this free uh, throw here, and missing it just shyly, but it does go into full time with us still having the advantage, and it leads us to winning the Coppa Italia Lega Pro here, uh, getting a nice title in the process, and if our team does need to go into the playoffs for promotion, that guarantees us a buy into the second round, which is pretty huge, because you just don't know what these schedules. Unfortunately, this uh, unbeaten streak we had going does end at the hands of Romini, who come into our home and beat us 2-1, meaning that things will come down to the last game of the season, and the media does see fit to ask as to what results we're looking for in this game. Honestly, couldn't have said it better myself, and with that, we are underway in the final game of the season, as Fiorenzuola comes into our home we have a chance of sealing our title chances here uh, against them overall. Biggest thing to keep in mind is that everybody's playing games in this final part of the season, as we can see here. Uh, Gubbio did win their game. They are two points ahead of us due to this result, meaning that we do need to pull off the victory here if we are to uh, get promoted automatically by winning Serie C. Things start off rather spectacularly for us in the fourth minute of the game as our goalie Venturi sends a long-range pass that finds Casper Poneman, who then splits the defenders and finds the back of the net from outside of the box. Genius move by him, he has been on fire throughout the latter portion of the season. And we get another chance in the 69th minute with a set-piece that nearly ends up being a goal if not for the Fiorenzola goalie. However, we do have a bit of a scare in the 87th minute where Fiorenzola finds a set of passes there and we think that they have the tying goal via Mattia Morello, but that thankfully gets called off due to an offside. Thus, we hold on to the 1-0 lead and with it, we become Serie C Girone Bay champions, becoming uh, automatically qualified for Serie B, which is an accomplishment in and of itself as the board just had 
our expectations being to be playing in the playoffs and be in contention, but not necessarily earn automatic promotions. So we're a bit ahead of schedule getting up there, which is good for the boys, good for the budgeting, good for everything else that is to come. Pretty great accomplishment, all things considered, and with it, our mission to get uh, AC and Aegeana back into Serie A uh, takes a step forward next season around, but no doubt Serie B will be a tougher uh, going for all with all teams involved and such, but we will tackle that challenge once we get there uh, next season around. We will see you then.